Well, g'day curd nerds. Welcome to another cheese making tutorial. Today we're making a cheese that was sent in to me by Charlie Pace and it's called Curranjang Creamy. Get your lips around that one. So Curranjang Creamy, Charlie describes it as uh, let me just read that. I'll read the email out to it. It says, Hello Gavin, hope you, Kim and the puppies are doing well. On last week's Ask the Cheese Man, someone asked about how to invent a new cheese. I don't know if you can use this or not, but I have a cheese I made up we call Curranjang Creamy. It is a fresh cheese, a little like a feta mozzarella cross. Easy to make and uses standard store-bought milk. I've attached a photo and the recipe which you are most welcome to post on your channel. Cheers, Charlie Pace. Well, thank you, Charlie, for writing. And it sounds like an old TV show I used to watch. I can't remember what it was. But it's lovely to have a new recipe. So um, without further ado, let me show you how I made Curranjang Creamy. So don't forget to sanitize all of your equipment. And the milk I'm using today is from Inglenook Dairy. Even though it's unhomogenized for this recipe, you can use pasteurized and homogenized milk. So the ingredients for this cheese is four liters of one gallon of whole cow's milk, one quarter of a teaspoon of lipase, one eighth of a teaspoon of thermophilic culture, half a teaspoon or 2.5 millilitres of calcium chloride diluted in quarter of a cup of non-chlorinated water, half a teaspoon or 2.5 millilitres of single strength rennet diluted in quarter of a cup of non-chlorinated water. You'll also need a brine. You'll need one litre or one quart of whey and 60 grams of salt. So add the lipase as you're heating the milk up and just sprinkle that over the top. And then give that a quick stir into the milk. Now lipase breaks down the fats in the milk and adds flavor to the final cheese. Now heat your milk up to 32 degrees Celsius or 90 degrees Fahrenheit. Now I directly heat the milk to the target temperature and then move it over to my sink where I have the precision cooker sitting at the right temperature. Just checking the temperature again and it's perfect. So now we're going to add the thermophilic culture and then sprinkle that over the surface of the milk. And then we're going to allow that to rehydrate for five minutes. Make sure you've got the milk covered during this stage. So once the culture has been rehydrated, then just stir that into the milk. And just check the temperature again. And it's perfect. So we're going to add the calcium chloride now, just stir that through. You probably notice that there's no ripening time for this cheese. And now we're going to add the rennet to set the curds and whey. Give that a good stir, no more than one minute. And then cover that up. Now we're going to allow the milk to set for one hour. So after an hour, we're going to check for a clean break. 
and that looks nice and solid to me. Now cut the curds into two centimeters or three quarters of an inch cubes. So I'm using my curd knife because if I use my curd harp, the curds will be too small. There we go. So just allow that to rest now. And we're going to allow it to sit for four hours. During this time, lots of whey will be expelled. So we're going to increase the heat to 52 degrees Celsius or 126 Fahrenheit. And during this time, we're going to stir the curds and whey. Just check the starting temperature and that should be spot on. Now it will take about 20 to 30 minutes if you're using a precision cooker like this to get to the target temperature. So initially I had it at 10 minutes, it took about 25. Here we are at the 52 degrees Celsius. And I've just turned off my precision cooker now that I've got to the target temperature. I'm going to remove all that. And remove the water. Now place a colander lined with butter muslin. So this is a thick, thick weave cheesecloth. And place it over a pot because we want to reserve the whey for the brine. And then we pour the curds Drain them through the cloth and remember to reserve the whey. Don't tip it out. So we're going to tie opposite corners of the cloth to form a bag. So that we can hang it up for draining. So drain overnight at room temperature. Just let that drip into the pot below. Meanwhile, before you go to bed, add the salt to a jug. And then we're going to put in one litre of the whey and stir that to dissolve. Let's give it a quick taste test. <laughs> so the next day, we're going to remove the cheese from the bag. Now, if you want a perfectly round shape, you could have turned it halfway through the draining, but I've got like a half circle there. It doesn't really affect the cheese at all. I'm going to cut it in half with a sharp knife, sharp, clean knife. And it looks nice. Looks a bit like mozzarella to me. And then we're going to place it into the brine. Now, I had the brine in the fridge overnight just resting and we'll give that a quick stir just in case any salt has uh, settled to the bottom and we're going to pop the cheese into the brine to salt it then we're just going to cover that again and pop it back into the fridge for at least 12 hours to brine at that time, it should be salty enough to eat. Anyway, over to Gav. So that's how you make Karanjan Creamy. Uh, looks fairly simple. I've had it in the brine for three days now. Uh, it's a simple whey brine, and you would have seen the measurements for that through the video. So let's take it out of the brine. I'll take one piece out, pat it down a little bit, and see what it tastes like, and see if it's worth making, which I think it will be. Oh, it's a fairly big cheese. So it's a little bit slimy, as you can see, it's slipping around a little bit. I should have put some vinegar in with the brine. Uh, it wasn't in the instructions, but it's probably where it gets its creamy name from. 
But when I took it out of the cheesecloth, it was just kind of like mozzarella, so uh, without the stretchiness. Anyway, let me just cut a bit off. Let's get this in a position where it's not going to slip and slide. Oh, yeah, it looks just like mozzarella. Now, Charlie says that it can be kept in the brine for two weeks. Now, if you're going to do that, I would highly recommend that you uh, add some calcium chloride and a bit of vinegar into the brine, uh, probably a teaspoon of each, and that'll help firm up the cheese. Uh, it won't lose as many calcium ions as you can see here, uh, but definitely a lovely looking cheese. Nice and fresh. Let me just have a piece here. Even with the creamy side. Mmm. Now it's fairly salty, but there wasn't a, it's not a high percentage salt brine. So it's not like 18%, it's more like a 10% brine. Um, but yeah, that's delicious. That would go well in uh, on top of salads uh, for the little bit of salt flavor. It'd go nice on a cracker with a bit of tomato and some basil, just like mozzarella. I dare say it probably melts as well. Um, I haven't tried it, but I think it would melt uh, just like a, uh, a good low moisture mozzarella would. So well done, Charlie. Great little recipe. Mmm. That is unlike any cheese I've tasted before. The addition of that lipase has really kicked in. It's really good. So for a fresh cheese, well worth the effort. Mmm. Anyway, there you have it, Curranjang Creamy. Uh, Curranjang is the area that Charlie comes from, so that's where the name came from. But creamy certainly is. Uh, so great little cheese to try. And as a first time cheese, probably will be very easy uh, to make for a beginner, that's for sure. The steps were very simple um, and it was a pleasure to make. I didn't really have to stick around too much uh, because, you know, it was just set and forget, especially with the uh, precision cooker using the sous vide method to heat the milk uh, during the cheese making process. Anyway, if you liked the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, then you know what to do. If you haven't already subscribed, please do so. Uh, and don't forget to check out littlegreenworkshops.com.au for your cheese making supplies. Well, thank you for watching Curd Nerds and I'll see you next time.